Right, well, good evening, everybody. Now, can everybody hear me? That's the important thing. Yeah, that's it. Good, good. Okay. Well, welcome to the new season, 2017 18 season. And um, thanks for loads of, loads of you coming out in the rain tonight. Good to see that everyone's making the effort, never mind the weather. Um, or, or indeed the traffic, which is rather, rather busy. Um, so, uh, I'm going to start off just with some, some memories of the, of the summer season, just some pictures that we've taken there. Um, I'll turn the lights down a bit. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Some things we've been doing over the summer season. Um, we had a few things since we last met back here in April. Um, we had um, a, a nice barbecue in our Mar Planetarium, which was um, quite an excellent afternoon. We saw a very good film there. Um, we've also had the uh, astrophotography exhibition, Heavens Above. That was, that was running at Bangor, and that's uh, three pictures there from that. You see, that's quite a, quite a well-attended launch there. We've got 30, 40 people out to, um, to, take, um, to, to sit through the talks there. Um, and um, Andy, David Collins, Bernie Brown, Mike Sims from uh, the Austin Museum, myself and Professor Stephen Smart, without that, it was a very, uh, very good afternoon. And then of course we also uh, we have our own stardom, and we actually got our own stardom. Um, it had its first outing at, at Castle Espy, down at the Solar Day down there. And actually, this is it, and it looks like it's about to take off at that point, doesn't it? It's, uh, it, it is actually a hovercraft, and you have to just uh, turn it down a little bit to, to stop it leaping off the floor. And we used also a boot camp at Lagan College, where we had star shows in that stardom, and also some very excellent solar observing. Um, the clouds did clear for a little bit there, and we got that done. And also uh, our, our Percy barbecue, that was a terrific uh, evening as well. The, the skies did clear for us quite a bit there. So that's, um, that's really our summer season. I want to talk about some sort of admin stuff. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you someone else's summer, summer on this. This is not the best one, is it? But, uh, uh, or is, it, is that the very best one that you sent me? I think I'm it's probably the yeah. yeah. um, Certain people, some people did go to the United States um, for the total solar eclipse. And um, as far as I know, we had no failures. Um, and um, that's, that's Andy McRae's superb. Uh, that's, that's an HDR compilation, as I understand, of a few shots. Now. Um, later on in the season, Terry and Andy will be um, talking at length um, about their experiences in, in the United States, but uh, that's just a little taster there. It, uh, it was a, a great success. Just a few bits of administration and information and stuff. Um, membership, sorry to come back to money, but uh, memberships for those who have paid are due. Um, they are still, um, after several years, I think it's six or seven years now, we've held the price at £20 individual, £25 family, so it's an absolute bargain for what you get for it. You get, uh, you get 14 lectures and a whole lot else, just for, just for you know, not very much money at all. Um, Brian is unfortunately unwell, but if you see Pat, Pat O'Neill, there's Pat, for those who don't know Pat. Um, then um, talk to him, or you can also pay by PayPal on the website. Um, Stardust, Andy here has produced a new edition of Stardust, and um, I'm told it is actually um, out now, so it will be coming through your letterbox in the next few days, um, and I'm informed it as, is as usual. Next edition, so well done, Andy, thank you for producing that. Um, there's a lot of information on the website, irishastro.org, and also where we link to the forum. Um, where we coordinate the observing. Uh, more about that in a moment. Um, also, there's news, info, live updates. You can, there's, there's an archive of, of Terry's excellent um, email bulletins there. And if you don't get that, then you're missing out on a lot of information. So see Terry and uh, get to add your name to his list. There's Terry. Everyone knows Terry. There's, um, and we have a Facebook, very active Facebook group as well. Um, if you're on Facebook and you want to get involved in that, that's, uh, you're entirely welcome. Uh, there's probably 900 members in that group, which is, which is quite extraordinary. Um, so that's <coughs> a couple of things that uh, Derek has asked me to mention just here. Um, you could be interested in either of these. There is an e-book uh, about the Saturn system, which is about Cassini and stuff. Um, 
um, free download on nasa.gov and there's uh, up to a hundred or so Cassini photos in that. Also, if you haven't been to see um, the film The Farthest, um, it's highly recommended, but unfortunately it's run at the Queen's Film Theatre here, has finished. Just to give you, a, I'm going to just do the first half of this, because otherwise it will go on forever and ever. Um, but Terry has again put together a fabulous um, programme of lectures for this season. Starting tonight, of course, with Professor Mark Bailey, um, he'll be with us in just a moment. Um, next fortnight, Dr Sophie Murray from Trinity College Dublin is coming up to talk to us uh, about space weather. Um, so that, that's an interesting one at the moment, so that, there's a lot going on with that. Um, Dr Laura Keith from Inspire Space, uh, we'll be talking about space law on October the 18th. Um, and November the 1st, we get a return visit from Professor Tom Ray um, from the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies, preparing for science with the James Webb Space Telescope. Well, looking back at what we've had from the Hubble, this is the next stage of that, so that would be uh, absolutely fascinating to hear um, Professor Ray's account of his work on that. A lot of work being done by Irish astronomers on the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, David Lisk, an amateur astronomer, will be talking to us about astronomical spectroscopy for amateurs, and that's an entirely new field to me, so I'll be looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, November 29th, Dr Stuart Sim, who's one of the uh, lecturers here at Queen's, uh, he'll be talking about how antimatter formed, so there's another whole dimension to the universe. December 13th, our last meeting here before Christmas, um, will be that extravaganza of eclipse photos and uh, accounts of all the stories that go with that from Andy McRae and Terry Mosley, so that's, uh, that is a, a, must, a must not miss lecture, and dates for your diaries, to put in your diaries now, um, the New Year party, we're running the party again, down in Comba, same format, but for me and McBride's movie in uh, the Tudor Cinema, and that is on Saturday the 6th of January 2018. If you write that in your diaries, keep that free if you want to come, and uh, that's, that's always an evening of good crack and fun, there's a, there's a quiz and all sorts as well there, so uh, it's, it's a good evening out. Um, we're running the observing nights again. Sorry, that table's come out a bit unreadable, <coughs> isn't it? But, um, um, the observing nights are coordinated by um, Ivan McAllister down here. Put your hand up, Ivan. Put your, put your hand there. There's Ivan. Um, and um, we've already had one successful outing last Friday. Um, the sky is actually, believe it or not, cleared a little bit, and um, a group went down to Delamont Country Park. So these are held. Um, generally at Delamont Country Park. We sort of, um, we reserve the, you know, the right to go somewhere else one day if we want to, but um, we just don't, you know, we've never done it yet. And Delamont's okay. Uh, it's got a reasonably good sky and a pretty good southern view, so it's, it's not bad. Um, we went there for anyone who came to the Perseid evening, that's where that was. Um, what it is, we, we select a group of weekends, and these are the first four here. So this doesn't come out terribly readable on a projector, but um, Friday and Saturday, 15th, 16th, 22nd, 23rd, October 20th, 21st, or, or 27th, 28th. Um, that one I can't even read at all, the November ones, but it's towards the end of November, because it's, it's all tied in with, with keeping the moon out of the picture as much as possible. And 15th, 16th, or 22nd, 23rd of December. Um, I put it on both the forum and Facebook page what we're doing. It's obviously weather dependent. Um, we don't do all four, we try, we try and get at least one, maybe two out of those um, with, with good weather. Um, the next ones obviously are this Friday and Saturday, the 22nd, 23rd, and I have to say that the weather forecast at the moment is looking a bit shaky. Um, but uh, we did get out last, last Friday and that's, um, that's a good start to the season. So that's the observing. It's always, it's always good fun. If you want to just learn how to find your way around the sky, or if you think you're buying a telescope and want to have a good look at somebody else's first, that's a, that's a great way to do it. So other upcoming events, there's an event at Port Ballantrae, uh, but it's all, um, and it's, it's not strictly an astronomical event, it's a sort of, it's an all-round science event on the afternoon, or actually 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the 30th of September. Um, it costs a bit of money, 750 for adults, 350 for child, but does include a light lunch. Uh, and that's at Port Ballantrae Village Hall, which basically, if you 
if you sort of drive into Port Ballin Trail and just keep going as far as you can go, you'll come to a great big car park and, and that's where it is. Um, but there's all sorts of talks there. And one there, um, we are there, actually Terry, uh, we'll be talking about astronomy for some part. Andy, actually. Oh, I'm Andy. Yeah. No, Two? just Andy. Oh, just Andy. Okay. I have got oh. a pass, so I don't know. Okay, that's fair enough, yeah. Okay, well, so, so, so Andy will talk to you about astronomy, which is good. Um, but lots of other stuff there to, to interest you as well, in a broad sort of science sense of things. A um, couple of other things coming up. The Mayo Dark Sky Festival, down in County Mayo, that's, um, that's a, a, a web address there. It's on, that address is on the, web, the website. You'll see down the left-hand side of the website there's a little section called Irish Star Parties, and there's a link to that one there. 27th to 29th of October, that's over a weekend. Uh, great lineup of speakers, and this well, does include Terry, I think I'm right in saying. Right. You're speaking at May, aren't you? No, no. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy called Mike Burton. Oh, okay. All right, that's what you were involved in that one. Um, and the other thing that we're doing, um, 10th and 11th of November, that's a Friday and Saturday, uh, we're launching our astrophotography <laughs> exhibition again, Heavens Above. Um, at the Carrick Fergus Museum and Civic Centre, um, and I'll tell you more details about that um, when, when we've got it nailed down. But that will be then that exhibition will run for a few weeks. Um, there, four weeks, I think. Now, then, I'll talk a little bit about some things in the sky um, just to add interest. Um, the sun, at the minute, this was yesterday, there's one spot on the sun, it's completely unexciting. Um, 2680, and it's not likely to do anything interesting because it's nearly, it's nearly past its way anyway. Um, and you look at the trend of you know, sunspots and you sort of say, well, you know, from having no spotless days four or five years ago, or even as recently as 2015, uh, we're now getting to a point where 21% of all days have been spotless. And you have to go back <coughs> to 2009, 2010 to see that uh, before. So it looks like from this, you'd say, um, that solar cycle 24 is on its way, it's, uh, uh, the sun is becoming very inactive. But if you look back just a couple of weeks, that wasn't the case at all. The sun sort of suddenly spluttered into life, and we had this on 5th September, um, we had these huge two sunspot groups here, and here's one of them, uh, 2673, and that's to give you an idea of how big that sunspot group is, that's a picture of the Earth at the same scale. Um, so that sunspot would swallow up the Earth several times over. And then it exploded. 6th of September, X9.3 class flare, the strongest for 10 years. Um, I think January 2005, if I remember, was about the last time we got anything that big. And that sparked off some auroras. It was mostly cloudy here, of course. Um, but as near as East Lothian in Scotland, Ronan Campbell got this great picture. Um, looking across the uh, fourth towards Kokodi and Sun there, um, that's, that was a, a local aurora. And here's the thing, um, sometime next week, if they survive the trip, those might come around again, if we're really lucky. If, they, if they're still bubbling away on the other side of the sun, um, next week, 25 days later, they'll come around to the same place. So let's say 20 days later, which will be the 25th of September, which is the beginning of next week, they might come around that corner again. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Sun doing interesting things in between being not very lively. Um, I'll just do a quick run through where the planets are in the sky. Um, the first three planets, Mercury, Venus and Mars, are all visible early in the morning, and we'll look at pictures of that in a moment. Um, Jupiter sets shortly after the sun and is very hard to spot. The, um, the angle of the ecliptic um, as we call it, is such that at sunset, it's very, very shallow at the minute, so um, by the time the sun has gone sufficiently below the horizon that you might be able to see Jupiter, Jupiter itself is that close to the horizon that you probably won't see it. Saturn is a bit further behind with Jupiter, um, and you can see that low in the southwest after sunset. It's really low um, and difficult to see. If you've not ever seen all of the planets, um, Uranus and Neptune are reasonably easy to find at the minute. Uranus um, is best seen after midnight, to be honest, and as, as these coming months go on, it gets easier to see earlier in the evening. But Neptune, um, once it's dark, you look around Aquarius, underneath the great square of Pegasus, sort of area, 
Um, and you might be able to spot Neptune. You do need a star chart, you do need binoculars or a telescope, because neither Uranus nor Neptune is visible naked eye. You need, you need uh, optical aids to help you see those. And the International Space Station is coming back. Um, evening passes start next, uh, next week, 26th, that's next Tuesday, um, and go through for a couple of weeks or so to the 14th of October. And as usual, in the middle of that time is when the really bright, big, high up passes will occur. So if you've not seen the International Space Station, don't forget to wave at the six astronauts on board, because uh, they're looking out the window down at us. So it's only fair to wave back, isn't it? And uh, um, you can get some great, great views of the ISS. Here's those, uh, those planets in the morning, for people who get up early in the morning. And this was uh, Martin Campbell got this picture on... Uh, the 17th, so that's, is that a, that's a Sunday, isn't it? Sunday morning. Uh, Martin was up bright and early in Dungannon. And what we've got here, we've got the, the moon, thin crescent moon there with Earth shine. And then here, Venus. That there is Regulus, Alpha Leonis, brightest star in, uh, in, in Leo the Lion. There are only four stars of the first magnitude that can ever be occulted by the moon. And actually, Regulus is one of the four. Uh, the other three are Aldebaran, and Spica, and Alte, uh, no, Alte, uh, Antares. And, um, and actually, if you were in sort of India or Saudi Arabia, um, the morning after this, you could have seen an occultation of Regulus by the moon. Um, these two down here, very close together. Mercury the brighter <laughs> of the two. Um, Mars right next to it there, very close. That morning, that's Martin Campbell's picture. I was up bright and early the following morning. Um, and here we go on the 18th, and uh, there's a very similar thing. What, what you see mostly there is the moon has moved. The moon, which in Martin's picture was right up here somewhere, has, has moved down. There is the moon. So there is Regulus, there is Venus. And Mercury and Mars have moved a little bit further apart there. So, so that shows you what 24 hours can do. Uh, so that's, uh, that's 30... The, the virtues of getting up early in the morning. I'd say about six o'clock on Monday morning. Um, so there we go. Um, I think that's more or less what I have to say. I'm going to, to sort of just introduce briefly um, um, our guest speaker this evening, Professor Mark Bailey. And what I'll do, I'll just give a quick, a quick run through of very short potted history of his his career. He uh, attended Burnham Grammar School um, and then went on from there to study. Physics at Cambridge University in the 1970s. Um, decided at that point, obviously, to specialise in astronomy. He did a master's degree in Sussex University in 1975, and then went on to do the, the, full, the full PhD up in Edinburgh in 1978, and has held a host of astronomy positions there, and developing a huge expertise in the fields of comets and solar system bodies. He does, um, I think there's one or two, just maybe one person in this room who also has an asteroid named after it, but Mark has one. Um, asteroid 4050 Emmy Bailey um, was, was named after Mark in 1990 for his work on comets. And um, most importantly for us, in 1995, uh, Mark came over here to become the director of our Mar Observatory. Uh, and in June 2007, was awarded the MBE for services to astronomy. So what I want to do, that's just a brief history of Mark's career, before he talks to us, I want to add one more to that list of awards. Um, as you know, we award uh, just once a year the Aidan P. Fitzgerald Memorial Medal. And I'm pleased to say that the recipients of it this year for... It's not enough, really, for all the work that Mark has done for us over the last 22 years while he's been director of the observatory. He retired last year, and actually he was saying to me earlier that uh, even though he's retired, he's still as busy as ever because he's got loads of... Uh, projects on go as, as the Emeritus Director of the Observatory. Um, but I'm very pleased to award that, and I've left it in my bag here. <laughs> right, Mark, I'm very pleased to, be to present you with this wonderful award. I'll open it up for you here. Perhaps we should throw a bit of light on the subject. Let's see. Let's see. <coughs> there you go, that's the Aidan P. Fitzgerald Memorial Award. Mark, congratulations. <laughs> Well, that's a wonderful honour. Thank you very much.
much indeed. I never thought for a minute that I'd be ever in this position, talking to a group of over 100 people, looking at this uh, very, well, not valuable in monetary terms, but valuable in historic terms, this medal. And um, when I begin my talk, I'll tell you a wee bit about Aidan Fitzgerald, because I knew nothing about him uh, until relatively recently. And uh, David Beasley, who some of you will know, kindly gave me some photographs um, relating to Aidan Fitzgerald's visit to South Africa. So I, I just want to start off with my talk with a few of those pictures. But it's a, it's a great honour to be given this medal. Uh, thank you very much. And to be surrounded by so many knowledgeable people in astronomy, it, it really puts me and other professionals in our places, should we say. But uh, here we are, uh, and it, it's great to be here, and thank you once again. Well, could you just repeat the handshake? Yes, of course. <coughs> Is this the body hand shape? This one over the body hand shape. No, keep it. Hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on